Yeah, I I don't have any I don't have any theme songs this week, YBs. Y'all, I have to say is I guess we back. Um, <laughs> hey, yeah, we took a short little break to kind of regroup and to kind of think about what we want the next couple of weeks of episodes to look like, and so we're excited to be bringing y'all some new content. Um, to, as a reminder, which I shouldn't have to. But I am Angie Hambrick, the Associate Vice President of Diversity, Justice, and Sustainability, and the director, no longer the interim, director of the Center for Gender Equity. Um, I just want to note the, uh, the disconnect between uh, the phrase excited to be back and your tone of voice, which is <laughs> this. I don't think that that serves our audience members well. <laughs> it honors their commitment to us. You know what? Who gets to def define what excitement is? Maybe this is excitement in my cultural context. This is what excitement sounds like. It is mellow. It is calm. Uh -huh. is what we're going to be talking about today, you know? Just because I'm not like, ah, doesn't mean I'm not excited to be here. Uh-huh. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> and you're right. Um, I am uh, Jen Smith. I am the Dean of Inclusive Excellence uh, at PLU, as well as Associate Professor of Gender, Sexuality, and Race yeah. Studies. Yeah. <laughs> the last S on that. Yeah, we um, check out, make sure you all check out our PLU community YouTube channel. Um, there are some great new shows, some great new content that's coming out um, in the, for the next five weeks um, as we kind of get through the summer and, and navigate what the semester is going to look like. Um, so we're happy that y'all stuck around, came back, or if you're new to our antics, welcome. You, welcome. 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 Yeah. This pretty dope. Yeah. So what you been doing these past couple of weeks? Uh, what? I don't know what I've been doing. Um, I will say and share with our folks one thing I've been doing. Um, I decided to travel um, this summer and uh, visit my family. And we met up in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, which was an adventure for all kinds of reasons. Um, we've been, it's more than two weeks out since we've seen each other and everyone's safe. No one got infected, so uh, knock on wood. But one thing we did while we were there is we went to Dollywood. And I am all about <laughs> Dolly Parton these days. <laughs> it always have been, really. But uh, the experience at that park was probably the safest place we could have been in, um, in Tennessee. Um, they, they reopened right, and it was a good experience, and we, roll, we um, rode lots of roller coasters um, and water rides, and we had a good time, and it was good to see my family. So, yeah, yeah everybody's yeah. got to make the decision that makes sense for their family, and that worked for us, and ultimately it, it worked out well. So Yeah, you mentioned before you left that you're, that's what your mother really wanted to do was to go to Dollywood. So yeah. I'm glad she got to go. And she did. <laughs> yeah, she did. Oh, yeah. she really did um and yeah we had a good time it was it was uh it was a lot of fun so yeah yeah what about you what are you doing i don't know i too have traveled in time of COVID. um again uh for reasons that made sense for me and my family so um we went to me and sanko went to minneapolis minnesota mm -hmm. to visit his godparents his nino <laughs> and his nina and his cousins um on his way to going to be with my mother for a month. So every summer, actually every summer, every January and every summer. So for like two and a half months out of the year, my son goes away <laughs> and, and he visits um, his, his grandma and his great aunts and all of his, his great great aunt and all of his cousins are there. And so it's good for both of us. Um, and this is just a part of his body clock. Like he knows that it's time to go and to be with family. And so travel safely, had on our masks, yep. um, uh, physically distance ourselves from other folks. Like it, it thinking about it before going was kind of nerve wracking and we yep. were, I was really nervous about it. But, you know, for the most part, everybody did what they were supposed to do. And we, we came back safe. I came back safe. He's in Milwaukee. So. Yep. <laughs> Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It was nerve wracking, uh, kind of in preparation. And I think it was nerve wracking to be around so many people because it'd been a long time since I'd been around that many people, but most people were fine. Um, and yeah, it was, it was good. So, and word on the street is that you went kayaking. I can't say the word I want to say, but girl, <laughs> <laughs> 
I went, I went on an 8.6 mile, so just rounded up to nine mile kayak around on some sort of lake, I don't know, in Minnesota. There's 10,000 of them. So I went on one of them for eight, for nine miles. Nine yeah, miles. yeah, you did. Yeah. So I think, because my birthday's coming up and we always do a birthday outdoor adventure, it might be kayaking. It was a delight. Like I, I really enjoyed myself. Every now and then, I got some of the deliverance music in my head because <laughs> <laughs> even though I'm in like I'm in the city of Minneapolis, it's literally a lake through the city. But every now and then, the banjo started to play, and I'm like, "Girl, stop, stop tripping." But it was a delight. I had a really good time. I don't know if I need to do nine miles again in one day, um, but I had a good time. Maybe if you weren't drinking beer while you were doing it, it'd be easier. I had multiple beers, multiple <laughs> peanut butter, stouts, and porters, because that's what I do when I go there. Um, thank uh -huh. you. I also had water. Nice. Um, and probably some cashews somewhere, because I feel like when you go camping, you have cashews. <laughs> that's so strange. <laughs> that's like protein. Like, I don't know. That's why I yeah. never did. I don't want to go. Yeah. There, I, when I was in um, Tennessee, uh, we were on a lake and um, I had a moment where I was on an inner tube in the middle of a lake with a beer and I was like, yeah, this is, this is what you got to do. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. Which transitions us to our topic for today, which is wrist. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to take that up, but I guess not. <laughs> I love it. Like, you, you want to keep going? We change it, flow, the format. That's fine. <laughs> Rest, yes. Um, so this week's kind of topic or the way that we want to frame our conversation today is to think about kind of refueling and play and this, this constant need to feel like we're productive and how this, this need to either for others to see our, for others to see us as productive kind of hinders um, our ability to play. And so there's this great website, blog, Instagram that I follow. Shout out to, I forget if it was you or if it was Tolu who first introduced me to the NAT ministry. Mm -hmm. They're dope, dope black women talking about the power of naps for your soul. And one of the things that they just posted was your obsession with productivity as a function of your worth is preventing you from tending to your soul. Ah, oh, nice. I know, right? And I felt that in, in my soul. And so like, what is, what is this, where does this thing come from with this feeling or this need um, to feel like we're, we're productive? What is productivity? Yeah, no, it's such a good question and, a, and a, an important question right now in the midst of COVID um, and the racial protests and everything else that's happening. I think people feel guilty for resting um, when there's so much to do, but there's always been things to do. Um, and right now we're looking at people risking their lives in order to go back to work and be productive because we don't have a system that protects people from that or supports them in, um, you know, not working. Um, I'm reading another, a book that's related and somewhat to this called How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell. And she's talking about how labor unions, um, had a slogan called eight days of work, eight days for rest, eight days to do whatever you want with the rest. And uh, she's sort of talking about how rest is written into that other eight hours, sorry, not eight days, eight hours. I'm like, I could do that though. <laughs> <laughs> I need rest because my brain is fried. <laughs> But eight hours of work, eight hours of rest, and eight hours to do whatever you want with the rest. So to do nothing, uh, really, and to not be productive um, is an important part of thinking about our, our, our I guess, work, work culture. Um, but if there is no rest, is there work? Because if it's constantly work, then it's just being, which that collapse is, I think, really dangerous. Um, and of course, it's a privileged conversation to a certain extent as well. Um, I think what I worry about is in, in sort of, you know, talking about the need for rest is, um, you know, some folks who, who aren't doing what they need to be doing. And, but anyway, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> I was about to go somewhere I don't know that I was ready to go. So anywho, yeah. So what's yeah, what's the recipe for you? He was about to throw some shade at some people who I probably knew who she was talking about, but y'all don't know. And so uh, stay tuned for another slip um, from Dr. Jennifer Smith right there. I don't know. The way I, I think a lot about productivity um, and whether or not, and I, it's so hard not to about whether or not I'm as productive as the next, next person. And so I work with a, a lot of high achievers and people who are always busy. And we talked before about kind of um, the problematic, ter problematic uh, term of busy and what that actually really means. Um, but people who are always busy, people who always have many things on their calendars, they're going from meeting to meeting, they're stressed about um, all the work that they have to do. And then sometimes I look at kind of my workflow, I'm like, damn, I have zero meetings today. I got all my work done by three o'clock. Am I not as productive as this other person? Or is, am I not as much of an asset to this organization or to the work as this other person who is always, or these other people who are always seem so busy? Um, and I've had to like push back on that and think about how that, of course, is connected to white supremacist culture about um, and, and who gets to define that and why do they get to define that and who are my role models and why is this person my role model for productivity um, instead of someone else um, and, and making time for in space for myself to say, you know what, if I can get my work done in five hours, um, that actually makes me more, a little bit more productive because yeah. I'm able to prioritize what is really important at this time in this moment and that might change and that ebbs and that flows but thinking about how do you prioritize um, what's important to you and how does rest start to become a priority in your in your work schedule so yeah. um, you know some of the things that I have the privilege of doing is saying that I don't want to meet over lunch hour whether or not I take it whether or not I eat whether or not I do something with it, it's still mine. And so how do, you, how do you find ways to be able to reclaim things that do belong to you um, and not feel guilty about them? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I like the idea of reclaiming time because I think part of it is reclaiming ourselves. If we're constantly working and we're defined by productivity, then um, we see in some ways to be human. Um, and we see building relationships with people. So I'm thinking when you brought up white supremacist culture, it made me think about individualism and um, bigger and more is better, mm -hmm. um, being two features of that and the constant requirement to produce um, and appear productive is, is part of that. And when you're, when you're busy, you don't take time to connect with other people. Um, and that connection is part of I would say both work and um, you know uh, creating a culture where we start to think about interdependent skills and values over independent skills and values, and you lose a lot of opportunity to be disruptive within an institution when you're always busy and distracted. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's another feature of white supremacist cultures. If you're always on a treadmill running, you can't stop, take a breath, look around, think this is kind of effed up. What's going on here? And you can't do the work of just of creating a culture that's more inclusive um, or anti-racist. So yeah. yeah, as as both we, I'm still a director. Jen is a former director of a center. Like uh, part of the work, I think, of being a director of a of a center is sitting in space and doing nothing. Yeah. Um. What or what appears to be doing nothing, right? Like me sitting in in my diversity center at the time and connecting with students and other staff and people who just kind of pop in and out is work. Like that is part of the work, and I'm being really productive. But for those who um, view productivity as something that you do alone at your desk in your computer, I was never busy, and so I had <laughs> seeing yeah. them. I had time. Where do you get this time to be able just to hang out? Yeah. Well, this is part of, this is the work. This is the work. And it's taken a lot of time and it's taken a lot of energy. And just because I'm enjoying it and I'm having a really good time doing yep. it, doesn't mean that it's not a part of, of the work that, that I do. And so helping people to see that, you know, 
our all of our work looks different and it's okay to sit in community that is a part of it should be a part of all of our work and yeah. it shouldn't be this privileged thing that only some of us have that i think that's kind of up. yeah and people should be giving people side eye for doing it i was telling a group uh last week how you and i will enjoy an hour or two lunch here and there sometimes <laughs> yeah. and we get side eye and i'm like oh we are working and you have no idea what we are doing um and um yeah maybe when maybe next we can talk about uh joy in the midst of crisis and chaos because i also know that people are feeling guilty for feeling joy mm -hmm. and for laughing and of course again that's not a universal experience it's gonna it, it will differ by identity and our relationship to the various issues that are happening but um it is possible to find joy now and it is possible to rest in the midst of everything and i think as the fall rolls around that is an essential lesson for everyone to know that it is possible to rest mm -hmm. and cultivating relationships with the people around you whether that's virtual or face-to-face -face, is probably more important now than it ever was yep. um, not only for our own sense of humanness but also for building those relationships that are going to enable us to do the disruptive work that we hopefully are seeking to do yep. so, yeah. right all right all right so what are you going to do the rest today well it kind of jumps into the last segment which is a my dishonorable mention all right so I, I will also say that um i am my diversity center alumni group decided that it would be real cute to do a quarantine to 5k <laughs> <laughs> and shout out to lace and jonathan and all, everybody else who's doing this wellness week thing but and I, I felt obligated to do it. And so I complain, but it actually, I actually really enjoy like walking, trotting. I'm not running or jogging. It's somewhere in between that. Uh -huh. Not a skip either. So I just say trot. <laughs> enjoy it because I get to listen. I get to catch up on my podcast. I get to be outside. I get to see people and not really be with people, be near people um and so for me right now that is really restful and i come back energized and nice. either ready to work again depends on the time of the day ready to work or ready to write so awesome what you gonna right. do what am i gonna do the rest of the day uh i think i'm gonna take a nap i try to take a nap every day um about 15 20 minutes on the couch so i'm gonna work in a nap yeah 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 that's what i'm doing so yeah speaking of honorable and dishonorable mentions how is uh the the couch to 5k at this honorable mention <laughs> it's it's like a like they say on fanti it's a mention because <laughs> like i it's a pain in the ass to actually move my ass to do it but once i actually when i get out on the track i enjoy it but just mm -hmm. to, the steps to get there i'm not i don't care for it i don't <laughs> care. so yeah, that's why it's a dishonorable mention. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about your honorable mention? Who you want to give a shout out to this week? I want to give a shout out to my little handsome fellow, Percy Aloysius. He was my miniature pincher who passed away yesterday. I had I got him on January 21st, 2013. He was the first thing that I purchased. After I, <laughs> I know that's so wrong. <laughs> we got back that moment. <laughs> That's why I put it in quotation. <laughs> After I bought my house, so like, Aww. in my mind, it was like, oh, you bought a house, you have a yard, this fencing yard, now you can get this dog. And so I saw a couple dogs, and Percy was the one. He was a handsome little, I think when I got him, maybe about eight or nine year old, um, old man, ornery, <laughs> handsome. He was pretty dope. And um, he moved to live with my mother full time when Sango was born, but we still, you know, saw each other a couple times a year. So he passed away yesterday yeah. after um, a lot of health issues. Um, but he was he was a great little dog. So shout out to Percy. Shout out. Yeah. To Percy. He was a tough old bird. That dog lived with a wire in his stomach for how many years? <laughs> he had a wire in his stomach. He had a bad heart. He had cancer. He had cataracts and glaucoma. Oh. He might have had a little touch of asthma. Um, but he made it. <laughs> he really did. Seven whole years. 
So enjoy your salt and pepper potato chips in doggy heaven. Yeah. Nice. What about yeah. you? Yeah, my dishonorable mention is the cancer that ate up our poor Percy. Um, so damn, damn the cancer. Um, that is some evil shit. Um, as far as my honorable mention, it's the damn sun. Welcome back. Where you been? Um, I'm ready for it. I'm going to go camping this weekend. It's going to be awesome. So, yeah. So, my honorable mention is the sun. Woohoo! Be careful when you camp and look out for, I shouldn't say it. Just Dude. be careful when you can Who should I look out for, Angie? Look out for the bears. No, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Shout out to our producer, Thomas Two Names. How can I forget Thomas Two Names? And congratulations, Thomas, on your babies that is coming. Woo! December or January. Shout out to you um, and your partner, of course. Um, and to our friends, Lace, and all the rest of the folks at, at Marketing Communication who make this happen. So, yeah. yeah. So, hey, that's it. That's our our show for this week. We're so excited to be back. and just so excited. <laughs> that was solely white girl performative excitement, and I'm kind of here for it. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I figured that you could relate better to that. I than, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was for you. So you. take care, YBs. We'll see you next week. <laughs>